Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you guys probably seen, we didn't make a video on July 4th, which was Thursday, which is when we usually do it. Because we don't want to interrupt your guys' vacations or if you guys had something going on. So we're just going to keep it for today. Last week we talked about Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Inshallah, today we will be talking about Imam Hassan, alayhi salam. The second Imam, the son of Imam Ali, alayhi salam. The son of Sayyidah Fatima, alayhi salam. And the grandson of Rasulullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس ودحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يخشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فالهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خب من رساها كذب الثمود بتقواها إذ انبعت أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقد الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها صدق الله العلي العظيم Imam Hassan alayhi salam was born 624 AD in Medina. His father was Imam Ali alayhi salam, his mother was Sayyida Fatima, and his grandfather was Rasulullah. Now, Imam Hassan, his nickname is Al-Mushtaba, Imam Hassan Al-Mushtaba. What that means is he's the chosen one. He was chosen by God. Now, Imam Hassan alayhi salam was special. He was receiving the best lessons. He was receiving the best lessons from Imam Ali, Sayyidah Fatima, and Rasulullah. Like, there's no lessons that get better than that. And more than that, he was going to the mosques daily, and he was listening to the ceremonies of his grandfather, Rasulullah. He was taking what he said and took them to heart and used them. In 631 AD, when al mushtaba reached the age of seven, his grandfather, Rasulullah, said Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein are Sayyidah and Shabab Ahl Jannah. What that means is that they are the masters of Jannah. And that's a lot coming from Rasulullah. But sadly in 632 AD, his grandfather Rasulullah died due to being poisoned. al mushtaba was eight years old at this time. And sources say 40 or 90 days after this, his mother Sayyidah Fatima also died and his younger brother, that would have been his younger brother, Sayyidina Muhsin, also died because Umar and Uthman tried breaking into the house of Sayyidina Fatima. They knocked on the door. She said, I don't want to open. And they forced her and they pushed the door and it was the wall, Sayyidina Fatima, and then the door. So she was squished in between. And it damaged her ribcage and eventually she died. So after that, Imam Ali alayhi salam was broken. He was extremely sad because he just lost somebody that was like a brother to him. Some, and he lost his wife, Sayyidah Fatima and Rasulullah. He lost them both. So he was extremely sad. Imam Hassan was extremely sad. Imam Hussein was extremely sad. So sources say they didn't take part in any conquests, political affairs, any wars for the next 25 years. It probably would have lasted for longer, but Uthman, the third Khalifa, died. And after people saw what did Abu Bakr do, nothing. What did Umar do, nothing. What did Uthman do, nothing. They thought, we need somebody better than this. So everybody ran over to Imam Ali. And what did they say? Oh, Imam Ali, can you be the next Khalifa? Imam Ali was originally supposed to be the Khalifa. And Bayat al-Ghadir, Rasulullah held his hand up. He's like, Makin tu Mawlai fa Ali Mawlahu. That means like, whoever is Mawlai, I am, Ali is your Mawlai. But Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, they robbed it of. Imam Ali. So in 656, Imam Ali became the Khalifa. He became the new Khalifa. And that started the Battle of Basra because I guess they were jealous that, oh, Imam Ali was a Khalifa. So the Battle of Basra was Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, and their people against Talha, Zubair, Aisha, and their people. Imam Ali's people won. They, they pretty much won the war. I'm, I don't want to say destroyed, but they won that war. And after that, in about 659, 6, 
1458 AD, Battle of Nahrawan occurred. Battle of Nahrawan was Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, only them three against the Khawarij. And Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein won that battle as well. Now, after that, it became 661 AD. 661 AD was when Imam Ali salam, was praying in Majid al Kufa, and Abdul Rahman ibn Mujlam came and he hit Imam Ali on the head with a poison coated sword. Sources say he coated that sword with poison a thousand times. So you're bound to die if it's if it's coated once or twice. If you're lucky, you'll live after once. He coated it a thousand times. Sources say Abdul Rahman ibn Mujlam, what was he? He was a Khawarish and he was mad that, oh, they went to war even though the Khawarish started the war with Imam Ali. Because Imam Ali doesn't start wars. He waits for the others to start the war. So after that, who came into Khilafah? Imam Hassan came into Khilafah. When Imam Hassan became Khalifa, Muawiyah was mad. And when Muawiyah was mad, what did he do? He went and killed Shias. He went and tortured Shias. He went and he went to go prison Shias. And after that, they saw that Imam Hassan didn't have a lot of people. So Aradu and no Imam Hassan to make a treaty. They forced Imam Hassan to make a treaty. Muawiyah and his people. Imam Hassan thought about it for a few days. Some sources say two days. Some sources say three days. Then he thought about the treaty. So what did he do? He thought, I don't have a lot of people left. Because they were killing off Shia. Just like I said, they were prisoning them. They were torturing them. They were killing them. He didn't have much people. So they decided to make the treaty. But they made it with conditions. And these were Imam Hassan's conditions. The first condition of the treaty was that al mushtaba Imam Hassan, would give over the Khilafah to Muawiyah, but Muawiyah must rule according to how the Prophet ruled. So he wouldn't be killing Shias, he wouldn't be starting wars with others, he would be good, that's another word. The next, the second condition would be that Muawiyah doesn't choose who rules after him. So it's either given back to Imam Hassan or the people, the people choose who rules. So Muawiyah doesn't have the right to choose who rules after him. The third one is, if you guys didn't know, just like Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Muay used to do the same thing. He used to go around stealing land. Abu Bakr stole Fadah from Sayyidah Fatima, and Muay used to do the same thing. He used to just steal land from people. That was the third condition. The fourth one, they can't steal stuff from anybody, land, anything. They can't steal money. They can't do anything from the Shias of Ali and all the people. The fifth one, Muawiyah won't take any actions against the Shias, so he can't be prisoning them, torturing them, or killing them. Just like I said earlier, he prisoned, tortured, and killed them. He can't do that. And they can't be bashing Imam Ali when they're on the when they're talking on the podium. They can't be bashing Imam Ali. If you didn't know, they all talked bad about Imam Ali. One of the conditions was Imam Ali would be remembered with dif dignity, not hatred and as a loser. Number seven was Muawiyah would pay his debts. If you guys didn't know, Muawiyah stole so much money. He would steal money from the Muslims. He would steal a lot of money. So the seventh one was he would pay back his debts. So that was the treaty that they agreed on. Let's just say they agreed on. Sources say right after Imam Hassan went to Kufa, who followed him? Muawiyah. Muawiyah went up to the podium. What did he do? He grabbed the treaty like this. He threw it. He stepped on it. What did he say? He said, you guys think... I became Khalifa to learn you guys about Islam. That's not happening. And he continued doing his ways. He became bad. And he got more, a lot more people than Imam Hassan did. Imam Hassan would bring people in with trust. He would like trustful people. What did Muawiyah do? He would buy people. Money here. Here's some money. Be with me. Fight for me. That's how Muawiyah was. And eventually Muawiyah saw that he couldn't do anything to Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan was just like his father, Imam Ali, and Rasulullah fighting wise man or wise. He realized he couldn't do anything in a one-on-one -on -one battle in a war. He wasn't going to kill Imam Hassan. So what did he think? The only way is we got to get someone from the inside. We got to ha hire somebody to kill him. So what did they do? They paid Imam Hassan's wife, Judah. Some people say Judy, Judah. It's one of those. And they say that Judah was a cousin to Muawiyah. That's what sources state. And he paid her money. He bribed her to poison Imam Hassan's food that he was eating. So she poisoned the food. 
And before Imam Hassan died, his last testament, his last will, he asked Imam Hussein to bury him had Rasulullah. And Imam Hussein knew that if he buried him had Rasulullah, what were they going to do? They're going to go take out his grave. They're going to mess up his grave. So where did he go? He went buried to get buried him in the Baqir, where there's Imam Hassan, Imam Zain al Abidin, Imam Muhammad al Baqir, Imam Jafar al Sadiq. He buried him over there. And sources state he died on the 28th of Safar in 670. And he was either 46, 47, or 48. Now, after that, Imam you know, Hassan came into rule, but we're not going to talk about that. The last thing I want to say is, I feel like you guys should start learning your kids about the Imams. Like, if you ask a kid who's the first Imam, there's kids that don't know. If you ask them the 12 Imams, there's a lot of kids that don't know. I feel like you guys should learn them. Because if you ask somebody about their favorite soccer player, a kid, they're going to they're gonna name you his mother, his father, his birthday, his brothers, his sisters, his uncles, his aunts. I feel like they should start learning the Imams. I'm not saying it's bad to learn about sports. I'm saying you guys should learn on both sports. It's not bad. And learning about the Imams is obviously, and the Nabuwas is not bad. The next thing I want to talk about is like prayer. I see that there's people that pray, like that don't even know how to pray. There, There's people that are in their 20s that don't know how to pray. And there's people that are kids that they don't know how to pray. If your parents didn't teach you, it's not on you, but you should still learn. And to all the parents out there that still haven't learned their kids how to pray, I highly recommend you guys learn how to pray so they get closer with God. Your kids can get closer with God. And you guys don't like, don't get judged at the day of judgment for not teaching your kids how to pray. If you didn't know, if you don't teach your kids the required wish bit, you're going to get judged. If you don't teach them not to lie, you're going to get judged. If you don't teach them not to do bad, you're going to get judged. There's even a hadith that states the first seven years of a kid's life is like, him playing him not having any words the next seven age of seven to 14 is the parents teaching him and do what he what the parents need to do to teach him from 14 to 21 the next seven years is the parents becoming friends brothers with the with the children so i highly insist for you guys to teach your kids how to pray and teach them about the emma the nabu teach them about islam in general so they can get closer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you guys are not judged at the day of judgment for your kids. Akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.